What's happening everybody? John the Realtor here. Welcome to my channel at John the Realtor, all one word. Today on Raw Real Estate, we're going to talk about three tips to becoming a full-time agent. One, two, three, becoming a real estate agent and transitioning to full-time. Tell you a little bit about how I did it. So stay tuned because we're going to do that right now. So here we go. All right, guys, so here we go. So what we're going to do today, like I said, is we're going to talk about some tips that um, will assist you in becoming a real estate agent uh, full time in California and um, some processes in place to allow you to help you do that. Um, three tips. So here we go. We're going to just get started. So number one, obviously, you have to go to school to get your license. If you don't know already, this is not necessarily number one, but you have to get uh, your course is taken care of. There's three of them. One is called California uh, Principles, Real Estate Principles class. One is your California Real Estate Practice class. And the other one is a um, an elective, uh, either an economics class or any other class uh, that is provided by the school of your choice that you go to. There are several schools in California. My office specifically uses California Realty Training. Um, they partner with Keller Williams and we actually teach the classes here and you can go to school directly through our office in partnership with them. And um, you can actually pay, you pay them directly and everything and you take all the courses that are necessary. Each course has its own exam. Once you pass the exam, then you are qualified to take the state exam. Uh, which uh, you apply for, you get some fingerprints done through LifeScan, and uh, you pay your fees and everything, and you, you have all your information and application sent in prior to your license. That's a big tip for you guys. Don't apply for your license and take your test and just to get the application going for your license because it takes longer that way. So big tip is uh, get your application and everything turned in prior to you taking your test so that you can get your license right away and start selling real estate as soon as you pass that exam. Um, once you pass the state exam, then uh, you have to uh, get your height license hung with a brokerage or a broker, uh, which means that you then apply to uh, or join a brokerage, uh, whether it's Keller Williams or any other brokerage, should be Keller Williams, but whether it's Keller Williams or not, uh, you then will hang your license uh, with that brokerage and uh, that way anytime you uh, sell a property you can uh, be in compliance and get that going. So tip number one uh, is study hard for that test. Study, study hard for that test. The thing you want to know about that test, since this is raw real estate and we uh, tell it like it is, the thing you want to know about that test is the test is a lot of um, generic questions. Um, they're not scenario based questions. So when you take the test, you're not going to come and do real estate and know everything about real estate because quite frankly, those questions are related to uh, real estate law, um, ethics, different things that help you become a real estate agent. But the experience really comes when you join an office and you get the support necessary for things like your listings and purchases and how all of that works. Um, if you uh, want to know more information, I do have a, a video that I made some time ago called how a real estate transaction really works. And I go over everything from representing a seller, opening escrow, how the whole process works from beginning to end. So check that out because that's going to be in my suggestion here. That's a great video. Um, number two, number two is start your database early. What do I mean by that? Look, no matter what company you go with, you're going to have a database. People you have spoken to before, um, your mailman, your doctor, your um, grocery clerk at the grocery store, your coworkers if you work full time right now, those people are your database. So biggest tip I can give you is start your database right now because as you're working with your license, you cannot sell real estate. However, you can start saying, hey guys, I'm getting my license. As um, soon as I get my test, hey, you wanna buy a house? Are you looking to sell your house? And you know what? If those people are, are loyal to you or they want you to help them, they're gonna go, yeah, that's cool. Let me help. Let me uh, know when you get your license and I'll be glad to, to work with you in purchasing my home. That's how I did it and that's how a lot of people do it. Start ahead so that you, by the time you get your license, you have people in place that are ready to list their homes or ready to purchase, okay? You can get assistance from agents in an office that you're already planning on, on working with. Um, you cannot practice real estate until you have a license in the state of California. However, 
you can get other agents to um, to help you with transactions if you want to. They can um, put you on payroll, you can be their assistant, they can pay you on a 1099 as an employee so that you're in compliance because we don't do anything uh, without integrity or unethical. So you wanna make sure you get everything in line so that you're compensated the right way so that you can um, help uh, other agents in need maybe and that kind of thing, okay? Um, and then once you get your license, then you know you can, of course, now you have someone to lean on that can help you with your transactions or with your listing or with your buyers as well, all right? So that is tip number two. Tip number three, tip number three is work hard. Look, there's offices out there that will do um, uh, lead generation uh, for their office. There's uh, offices out there that will hand you leads. Um, you'll talk to people that are on teams and all of that. Uh, if you wanna join a team, you definitely can. Uh, if you don't wanna join a team, then you don't have to. You have to do what's best for your business. Uh, you have to lead with revenue, okay? So. Leading with revenue means don't spend unnecessary, unnecessary money on marketing, signs, different things until you are ready to do so, okay? That's your, that's your part of your point number three. And the reason why is um, work hard because a lot of people think they come into an office and they're gonna be handed 100 clients or 10 clients or whatever. And nine out of 10 times, guys, it doesn't work that way. So I wanna set that expectation right away. It does not work that way, okay? You have to go out and get it. Um, 2020 has been a weird weird year with COVID-19 and open houses. Uh, and quite frankly, we haven't been able to do open houses. So uh, with that, what we do is we do a lot of old school marketing. We're doing some uh, mailers right now. We're doing cold calling to our past clients and that kind of thing. But you know, part of working hard is also talking to everybody you know about real estate, everyone. Wherever you go, you want to let them know, hey, are you looking to buy or sell a property? This is who I am. This is who I work with. Uh, give me a call. I work on a great team. If you're on a team, if you don't, then obviously you don't want to tell them something that's not true. But work hard. Once we get back to open houses, guys, those are the key to you building a database with buyers. A lot of people think that you become a realtor and then immediately you're gonna start getting listings. It doesn't quite work that way unless you preemptively start talking to people before you get your license, letting them know, hey, when I have my license, if you're looking to sell your home, I can help do that um, so that you can secure those listings. Doesn't always work that way. Uh, most agents start out as buyer's agents where they work either on a team um, or uh, through lead generation sources to gain buyers. And what that does is it gains, gives you knowledge on your transaction and it gives you future client referrals through those buyers because those buyers eventually will need to sell or have other people that need to buy or sell property. So that's very important. Um, we've had a lot of agents join our office or our team expecting leads or expecting um, this, this uh uh, a handout or that kind of thing. And don't get me wrong, we occasionally will give out leads, we'll occasionally have overflow and that kind of thing, and we definitely share. But look guys, at the end of the day, it takes you to get that work going and to get those leads moving. Because in real estate, it's not like going to buy a laptop. They're not gonna come to you because you need to buy something. You need to go to them because there's more than just you out there. There's more real estate agents right now in 2020 in the month of December than there are inventory in some areas, okay? Not all areas, Don't I'm not gonna be extreme, but think about that. If there's 500 homes on the market in an area and there's more than 500 realtors or even 300 realtors, what do you think that competition looks like? So there's people out there that are hungry, that are go-getters, and that's how you get to um, become a good agent who has a lot of clients and a lot of deals. It's the consistency and the hard work to go get it. Sometimes guys, you'll sit in an open house for four hours and you will do nothing and talk to nobody. And that's okay. Because on the flip side, there's gonna be open houses that are gonna be busy and you're gonna get someone to sell their home and purchase the home with you as well. That's happened to me many times. I sat in an open house a couple years ago um, the buyers came in, they were interested in the property I was sitting in. I said, great, do you own a home? Yes, I do. Perfect, do you have an agent? No, I don't. Well, we ended up listing their home and they ended up buying through me, but not that home because we had gotten an offer on the same day, 
but another home actually for more money. So it does happen. It can, it can work out that way for you. So keep that, keep an open mind towards that and work hard. So that's it guys. It was a quick video today. Three bonuses. Now, since you stayed till the end, I'm going to give you a bonus tip at becoming a full-time real estate agent. And this is your transition. Okay. A lot of people have jobs when they become a real estate agent and a realtor. So a realtor, um, you don't get paid until after the home closes, right? So you open escrow, it's a 30 day or 45 day escrow, sometimes 60, 90 days, depending on if you're a commercial agent and so on. You don't get paid until that escrow closes and the checks are sent over to your office. So sometimes you're waiting 60 days for a check. Well, what do you do in the meantime, unless you're a producing agent who has two, three, four, five, six deals that they're closing month in, month out? Well, right now you have a job, right? So you have a full-time job, you're a real estate agent, you tell everybody at work, you tell all your friends and family, people you meet and so on. As you start selling real estate and you get busy enough to where you're doing both full-time, that's where you know it's time to transition. That's point number one, okay? It's like, hey, you know what? I can't do a full-time job here and a full-time job there because quite frankly, I'm not gonna be good at either of them because I have to give both jobs at the attention that is necessary to be successful. So that's actually gonna hurt me more than help me, right? So that's number one. But in order to do that, which is number two and actually should be flipped, is you need money in the bank, guys. You have to have a minimum, minimum of six to eight months of savings in your account of your expenses in order to become a full-time realtor. Why? Because if you are new or green and you don't know what's going on and you don't have a big database but you're doing really well, well you need that savings just in case you don't get a closing for a month, okay? Because it will happen, okay? Uh, very rarely do you become a real estate agent and right off the bat close 10 deals, five deals, seven deals. Like I said before, guys, you really have to work towards it in order to get that done. Can it be done? Yeah, absolutely. But you have to put in the time necessary uh, for your lifestyle or to maintain your lifestyle. So guys, that was my video today uh, for my heart of hearts. I wanted to let you know I've been getting some questions on, on hey, what's the best way for me to transition uh, from my full-time job or part-time job or you know, full two part-time jobs into real estate. And that's how guys, you, you have to work hard, build your database, save money, six to month, six to eight months, excuse me, of income in the bank that will help you pay bills in case you don't have a closing. And even if you start out being a, um, a kick-ass real estate agent, then you know what? At least you have that money saved and you can spend some money on marketing or doing other things, but at least have that money put aside so that you can do what you need to do to transition and be successful. That's it, guys. If you're interested in becoming a real estate agent, I am in Southern California. I will have a link for you on um, California Realty Training, who we partner with, as I said before. Also, if you're interested in Keller Williams, I will have up here the link to the seven benefits to joining Keller Williams. If you have any questions, guys, comment below. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to all the subscribers. Um, I do a uh, Lego playlist as well, which you can see my Batmobile there. So stick around, guys, because I don't do just real estate. I kind of show uh, my fun side as well. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll, we will see each other soon. And uh, stay productive.